Hi, and welcome to Night Clerk Radio. This is episode 77, The Music of Realm and Ritual, uh, which is a Boston-based black metal dungeon synth label, and we'll be getting into two of their albums. But before we get into that, first off, hello, Burke, my good friend and co-host. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you, Rod? I'm doing very good, actually, <laughs> because I have a bit of personal news, uh, but oh, is boy. relevant to this podcast. Uh, so Terror Vision is a company who releases not just uh, soundtracks on vinyl and cassette, uh, and we've actually mm-hmm. previously featured them in an episode as they release the Unsolved Mysteries soundtrack, but they also have gotten into releasing uh, movies on Blu-ray, now old reissuing movies on Blu-ray. And and I've talked about this on other podcasts, but my parents made a direct-to-VHS <laughs> movie called Copperhead, and I was in it as a very, very small child. Yeah. And like early direct to VHS, right? Like Copperhead was like a three, not like yeah. late eighties, early nineties. It was DV yeah. stuff. It was early, early, early straight to VHS. It is possibly the first direct to VHS movie. It is definitely mm. in, in that very, very first wave of like, yeah, the VCR has reached consumers and like they need more product to fill the rental shop shelves. So Copperhead was only issued once on VHS and went out of print and uh, it it became infamous. Like I've seen tapes go for like 200, 300 bucks on eBay Mm -hmm. over the years. And it's, you know, an apocalyptic tale of greed and paranoia and revenge. And it features a lot of Copperheads, uh, uh, mildly venomous snakes, uh, Mm -hmm. endemic to the, yeah. All, all treated fairly and equally. (laughs) <laughs> sure yeah no for the duration uh, of the production there mm-hmm, despite uh, there not being a you know any sort of oversight on this mm-mm. what we'll call the set which is really just a field in the ozarks <laughs> it was more of a hill but yes uh, you know what it's a hill and there's a house and there's a picnic table upon which a baby ross is sat mm-hmm. well there's two houses there's the the abandoned right. church turned a uh, hideout and then there is a nice house but um it's like roar for snakes <laughs> <laughs> yeah Basically, so uh, it's now been reissued on Blu-ray by Terror Vision. And uh, also the movie I made in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, over a period of years from like 2006 to 2009, uh, uh, Motorhome from Hell, which is based on one of my dad's scripts, uh, is also going to be packaged on the Blu-ray. There's like 13 hours of extras. But we also had the soundtrack, uh, which is actually features a lot of synthesized music. And that is being reissued as a vinyl and cassette and it is up for pre-order right now. And you can listen to a sample of it on the Terror Vision website. And if you like obscure, you know, synthesized music scores, it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty banger soundtrack. I think like, it, it is. yeah, it's the best part of Copperhead, <laughs> quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, no, offense. no both the people, there are two, two guys who, who did the soundtrack for it. And they were both like composers from the university of Missouri, Kansas city. Like they're both like academic composers who were doing moonlight Synth professors. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Oh man. Yeah. You can look like one. Sorry. This is turning into the Copperhead episode. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll do an episode later. Once the soundtrack comes out, uh, reviewing that and possibly another terror vision. Something that else that's been issued by Terror Vision. So mm-hmm. anyways, we'll have links in the show notes so you can order the Blu-ray, uh, which has commentary tracks with me, my parents, also commentary tracks with me, friend of the podcast, Caleb and uh, Spencer from the, you know, formerly of the Mix 6 podcast. And so, yeah, there's a ton of features on it. But yeah, just maybe check that out. So anyway, I thought that is definitely <laughs> relevant to uh, the listeners of this podcast. Oh, yeah. No, it's a great synth soundtrack. It's just it's just such a fascinating movie that's hard not to talk about oh, for sure. a while. Yeah. So we'll we'll save a lot of the deeper discussion for the actual episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, we should talk about uh Realm and Ritual. So <laughs> one of the listeners on our Discord posted a link to a Daily Bandcamp article titled Boston Anti-Fascist Label Realm and Ritual Specializes in Black Metal and Dungeon Synth. And obviously, uh Dungeon Synth is, you know, music to our ears quite literally. And so <laughs> I read the article. It seemed very it seemed like a very interesting thing uh, label because they, they specialize in like taking existing albums and giving them physical media releases like cassettes and a, and a couple of vinyl. And the person who runs the record is Sean Masick, the vocalist for a band called Lunar Arc. And he has this charming anecdote of why he likes cassettes so much, which is mm. his friend gave him 
you know, his parent saw the corn's life is peachy and saw the parental advisory sticker on the cassette and said, you can't have that cassette. So he had his friend make a copy of it on just an unlabeled tape. And so he'd listen to that. He didn't have the, the, the notes or whatever. So he had an unmarked max L cassette to listen to on my headphones when I was alone in my bedroom. And there's a sense of mystery and freedom present in format that wasn't captured in CDs. So that's why he likes releasing cassettes now. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah. But they have a pretty good selection or curation of uh, Dungeon Syntax. And we picked two albums to look into that. You listened to actually quite a few of the albums uh, that were referenced in the Daily Bandcamp article, right? Yeah. There's like six of them Mm -hmm. or so. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I just went through all of them because I... It was a good place to pick something for this episode. So I just went through them and, and figured out which one was kind of most interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Could you sort of pick up like an overall like theme or like idea, like what what the aesthetic of Rauman Ritual was? <laughs> well, it's interesting because it is just, you know, black metal slash dungeon synth. So it's it's spans that range. So like and I think they picked the albums in there to highlight the range mm-hmm. of what's in there. So there's there's like the album I picked is meadow goat or rather the album is goat meadow by meadow goat which is is closer to dungeon synth but still has a lot of like noise synth and drone elements mm-hmm. to it versus we'll get into your album uh, my secret horror by wooded memory which is much more like classic isolated piano like loneliness and isolation music mm-hmm. you know like i'm in a dark mystical forest <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's like what a lot of stuff is but there are also albums on there, like I Am Awake and My Body Is On Fire is the by Ocean of Ghosts. And that's like straight up just like a metal album, right? Mm. And uh, Gutna by Rota is um, more punky mm-hmm. or like noise punk almost. Oh, okay. Interesting. So there is absolutely a, a range. Yeah, it's like folk noise punk. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. It's largely... I guess post-punk is the term for it, but it's largely like much more ab- abrasive, fast-paced, aggressive, mm-hmm. um, much more about like the horrors of being colonized, basically. Oh, yeah. Quite frankly. Yeah. So that's the range that's in the Van Cow album. I have not like gone through their whole right. well, yeah. discography, right? but I'm sure that this is a representative sample that is, you know, picked for the purpose of like, you'll probably find something you like. And, and I did. But it's not like six albums that all feature synth arpeggio. You know, it's not, there's no sort of like uh, connective tissue in that way. Yeah. Although I'm sure there are clusters of each of these, these representative samples throughout the whole discography. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious about, you know, some record labels have a very clear vision of what, you know, fits mm-hmm. in their discography and what doesn't. And others are just like, oh, you, you seem like a cool act. <laughs> Come sign with us. Yeah, so I think the focus is really like you were talking about with the cassette re-releases, mm-hmm. but the range of music is, I mean, there's nothing on here that's like slush wave or whatever. So there's some, you know, genre targeting. Yeah. But it's it's a little broader than just it all is. It's it's not all like, it's not like, you know, HDK or whatever. Yeah, HDK is a very like clear aesthetic of what they like. Mm-hmm. Cryo Chamber, right? Yeah, hey, Cryo Chamber. Yeah, also <laughs> another th- label that knows what it's about. And yeah, yeah. This one, I think they know what they're about, but what they're about is more political and, mm-hmm. and like preservation of art focused yeah. than sounding exactly one specific way. Yeah, no, which is totally valid and very interesting because totally. we got these album. The albums that we did pick are very. They're both very good, but they're both very different. Yeah, mm-hmm. we should probably get dive into them.
that was from Milkweed, which is track two off our first album, Goat Meadow by Meadow Goat, which is something I always get backwards in my head. Yeah. But I nailed it that time. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you. So this is an album I picked because I think it was closer to, we sort of wanted to talk about Dungeon Synth. Mm-hmm. So I picked something that was, was closer to Dungeon Synth. This is a very interesting album that is a combination of field recordings and lovely synth melodies, but also like a lot of drone, a lot of noise, mm-hmm. a lot of ambient. Mm-hmm. It's it's an interesting album because it's really, it's six tracks, but it's really meant to be listened to as one whole. Like there's no, a track ends and then the next one begins. It's, it's generally like seamless. Yeah. Breakless transitions between tracks. Like they just flow into one mm-hmm. another. So it is, it is one cohesive whole. And I sort of joke that it starts as promised. It's called goat meadow mm-hmm. opens up with <laughs> like field recordings of a meadow. And there's like a goat and little bell. And then it really shows you what it's about, where it just brings in uh, this like static slowly overtakes everything. And then you're in, I don't know if it's supposed to be like nightfall or like a, a life death cycle. Cause it kind of ends with earthworms and stuff. So I don't know if that's like decay at the end. But it it just moves through these a really nice combination of like abrasive structures. So there mm-hmm. is drone or static or or some harsh noise. At least on on some tracks, the synth patch choices or or instrumentation is less has less pleasing timbres. I'll say on the first track, Goat Meadow, there is like grindy. I call them floppatrons because they're that effect of when you take something with like a controllable step motor and you have the motor step at certain frequencies to produce pitch. Mm. Right. So that's like an instrument thing we talked about, I think on the master boot record oh, yeah. episode, yeah, yeah. but like Floppatron is like a meme. It's like a, a bay of floppy drives and they all have uh, step motors and a step motor is a motor, which steps a very precise distance per trigger. So it's used for reading data mm-hmm. right off, like off something. Cause it always moves like one bit at a time, basically mm-hmm. versus like a, a continuous motor. Yeah. It's one, of, it's one of those iconic sounds of, uh, computer technology like the modem sound um and exactly yeah it's that we're hard drive reading you know and, yeah yep and people make music out of it because you can just send commands mm-hmm. you know such that it vibrates at 440 or whatever and then you you got music mm-hmm. and i think there's a lot of that it just has a very specific like disconnect and like the the grindiness of it oh yeah yeah grind is a good word for it. grindy yeah 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 because it's just you just hear that motor grinding underneath mm-hmm. and then a lot of in the track that i sampled there's a lot of like really crushed, you know, crunchy mm-hmm. sounds. There's like some 8-bit influence that sounds a little video gamey at times. Yeah. Like old video game too, like Atari, mm-hmm. like Commodore, like really early. Yeah. Stuff. Like maybe even pre-8-bit. Like I say 8-bit, like out of habit. Yeah, yeah. But like 2-bit. Like even yeah, older yeah. than. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a really cool album because like. It's interesting because thematically, like in, in visually, like the album uses like medieval art, right? Like a, like a page mm-hmm. from an illuminated book as the cover and like the, the title and the opening field recording, like is uh, evocative of like nature, like, and the most beautiful pastoral meadow you can possibly imagine. And, uh, so like, you know, if you were to told a thousand people, like what kind of music would you set to this? Like none of them would pick this kind of music, like, (laughs) but it it works Mm -hmm. because I think the thing is like, it reminded me a lot of ways of like, there's like a a lot of like post-rock and like psychedelica kind of like vibes to Mm -hmm. this album. And it's trying to get the state of mind of being in a hot, you know, it's a hot summer pastoral metal. You're, you're probably a little stone and you're just vibing to nature and your mind is grinding (laughs) is it's you know there's a lot of like lo-fi crackle in it as well but it's it's mm-hmm. super crunchy so I, I i think it's it's trying to get in the state of mind of being in a meadow and trying yeah so i don't know there's this, this interesting con- i i haven't fully resolved in my mind but like there's this interesting contrast between the, the use of anachronistic technology and like this medieval symbolism and theming to the album yeah and uh i find that really really fascinating it's a, it's a choice i would not have made and so like i really like it mm-hmm. yeah it's interesting because i do think there is some sort of cycle or like going through the night theme because one of the tracks is called um school which is just an old word for twilight mm, right yeah 
I don't know if it has other meanings, but that's what I've always heard it used in like older literature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that um, has like cricket yeah. sounds in it too. Like it night mm-hmm. is definitely mm-hmm. falling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's much more field recording. Some of the like higher pitched, like nice synth melodies mm-hmm. drop out and it's much dronier, mm-hmm. especially moving into the next track, the track after that living amphibians, which is the longest track on the album. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like the bulk of it. Uh, something like 11 minutes, but it has like these cycles of melodic pieces. But then there's like crunch and distortion after it. But then I don't know if it's like you're dying at the end <laughs> because it fades out. Like the last three minutes are drone and like deep, deep, deep drone down into there's like nature and sweeping sounds. But then there's this this droning bass that just frequency sweeps lower and lower and lower until it just falls out of. I think it almost just falls out of like your hearing response range. Mm-hmm. Like it definitely falls out of your headphones response range, even for good headphones. Damn, yeah. It just gets so deep, deeper and deeper and deeper that you just can't hear it. Like it's like a, it's like a, fre- it's like fading by frequency sweep instead of like lowering the volume. Huh. Right. Yeah. It just, it's what it feels like. You know, I'm sure there's lots of production on underneath because this is a really well produced album, yeah. but yeah. that's what it feels like. It just kind of, it's like this like fading into non existence. And then the next track, Earthworm Waits, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so that's like kind of as I was thinking like some death theming. A little more crunch, but there's like organ. Yeah. Elements. It's almost like heavenly, like church organ elements, yeah. but like in this, still in this like crunchy droney mindset. Yeah. And then that just fades back entirely just to like field and meadow recordings. So I don't know. Maybe the goat had a nightmare, came back to go to bed. And <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, medieval view of time. It's of all cyclical, death. baby. Uh, it all, it's all. Yeah. The same. You know, I do want to circle, you know, mentioned how well it's produced uh, and you mentioned it a little bit, but mm-hmm. I really want to highlight like the transitions between tracks are really mm-hmm. like excellent and like notable. Like I, I, it's like, because it does the thing where they kind of start foreshadowing the next track at, towards the end, like, you know, track mm-hmm. one, you know, that you start hearing bits of track two start starting to come in towards the end of track one. And so it's just this seamless blend. Uh, and it, it's just like, Ooh, this is nice. So like the band camp download of it, by the way, has like, they have the whole album as one track at the end. So like mm. you can, you can listen to the whole thing uh, in one without having to, to, to swap tracks. So uh, I, I quite like that. Yeah. Track seven goat meadow long play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I enjoy that, but it's yeah. Just, I, I, I really would like to know more of the um, what went on, what, what, what there, there's some intense like logic or reasoning behind it. I feel there's more going on behind the scenes and we, they're more let on because we're only seeing part of the whole picture. I think, I don't know. It's a very fascinating album because it's so atypical of dungeon synth, uh, in a lot of ways. Oh yeah. yeah. And just like, yeah, it's so easy to make like a droney fuzzy kind of album, but like with this medieval symbolism and field recordings of, of nature, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, Hmm. It, it's something I'll have to think about for a while, <laughs> but it's something I didn't really have time to turn over, like in the context of a week of thinking about yeah. it. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of luck going on. That I couldn't quite put my finger on, mm-hmm. but I really do think there's like a post rock element to it as well. Like, Oh, yeah. sure. It does get like, there are times it's like, Oh, this is Godspeed. You black and we're just kind of vibing, just kind of taking a break between the more intense tracks. or just kind of noodling at this point, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah, like I really like like on track three, uh, the creeping vine, just these waves of synth drone and fuzz washing over you. It's very pleasant. It's, it's you know, the goat is frolicking in bit crush sound. It's, it's very good. <laughs> was 
My Secret Horror, track one from the album My Secret Horror by Wooded Memory. This is the you know the title track and the opening track of this album. And uh, there's actually a music video, uh, which we'll put a link in the show notes, which is uh, someone walking through the woods. It's been made to look like a black and white film with a lot of scratches on it. And they kind of have this these these bits of narration or the, these uh, title cards indicating someone wandering through the woods, dying of some injury and trying to get to a lake like we used to look at before they, mm. they die. So it's very evocative of, you know, loss, contemplation of mortality and uh, which is pretty appropriate given, you know, my secret horror wooded memory. This is a very dungeon synth album. This is extremely, you know, all entirely synthesized uh, as far as I could tell. And uh, what I like, though, is that Dungeon Synth is often pretty bombastic or video game themed, Um, you know, Mm -hmm. wizards battling dragons in or adventurous. Yeah, uh, adventurous. And this this is not this is someone in the alone in the woods at night and like being mm -hmm. afraid or contemplating death, uh, which is rapidly approaching, but like not in a scary (laughs) way, but in like coming to peace with it, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's very good. I listened to this album multiple times and it's it's. Well, I also like because a lot of Dungeons and albums, they'll, they'll be, you know, it's like a movie soundtrack in that like, oh, here's the calm track. Here's the bombastic fighty soundtrack. <laughs> and it kind of mm-hmm. takes you out of the the moment. And this one, it's entirely sort of tonally consistent of just like, you know, meditative, but sort of somber and uh, reflective. So it's it's quite good. Yeah, I think I definitely liked the minimalist aspect mm-hmm. of it the most, especially in comparison to. Meadow Goat, like it was a nice pairing mm-hmm. of something both really, really good, but something kind of calming and then something more abrasive. Yeah. You know, it still manages to keep that interesting because there are a lot of choices of timbre in those keys. Like it, it starts off with more just what you think of as like a, a classic, I don't want to say grand piano, but like something akin mm-hmm. to that, right? It might not be literally a grand piano, but in that vein. But there's also stuff that's like higher pitch, like slightly out of tune or older or, or closer to, again, I don't know my keyed instruments as well, but like harpsichord is in my head, mm-hmm. but that's not quite right. Yeah. You know, and, and as a result of, of sort of being minimalist and not having all of these aggressive synth elements or like percussion and stuff, it has a more stronger melody writing, mm-hmm. which is important yeah. to get, get you through that. And I, yeah, I'm just partial to this stuff because I do think that like loneliness, horror, isolation media is probably my favorite, like broad genre mm-hmm. of, or more than like monsters or, or sword and sorcery or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's more trying to get to the internal rather than dealing with the external sort of like terror, mm-hmm. terrifying thing. Like, Oh no, there's a scary monster. There's this amazing Vista. Mm-hmm. It's all like about the mind, you know, your, your emotional and, and personal state of being. Mm-hmm. And also it's not droning, right? Like there's a lot of like, mm-hmm. like structure and complexity to this yeah. album, which I, I find, you know, a lot of the albums we review are pretty like soundscapes and layered and like very, mm-hmm. you know, gentle transitions or just kind of fading in and out. And this is not, nope, we have arpeggio, we have melodies, we have structure, we have like mo- reoccurring motifs, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's very good. And there's, there's, there, it's not entirely like there are elements like I like, some of the tracks later on, like track six, have like these synth gongs or like, you know, like heavy drums or like kettle drum kind of sound things. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it has sort of like this this story arc of like going waking up in the woods or going into the woods and then kind of like all the way at the end to, to the end of track eight uh, beneath the ice sort of starts with the wind and ends with the wind howling. <laughs> so like it doesn't the story has. Not probably not a happy ending, you know, like somebody falling beneath the ice uh, alone in the woods at night. But, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. maybe they're at peace now. You know, they're not afraid anymore. And maybe that's an appropriate ending. But yeah, I I, uh, would like to. In fact, you know, I mentioned the kettle drums. I only listened to a bit of track four.
that is the track four is called Alone, and uh, you can hear it sort of picking up in intensity as the kettle drums are introduced, or at least, you know, synthesized drums. But yeah, and, and that track sort of begins at a very gentle, kind of calming uh, melody and kind of mm-hmm. like picks up, which I like. Yeah, this track does, uh, Alone is an interesting break point, because it's eight tracks, and I do think the first half, at least qualitatively, felt pretty different compared to the second half. Mm-hmm. Like I think the first half has much more of this focus on like keys and stuff, and the second half is much more like synth moods, I guess, mm-hmm. to me. In particular, that transition point of track five shadows, I really liked like the opening thirty to sixty seconds or so. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah. longer of, of shadows has this like synth choir on it. Yeah. And uh it was a good little bit of like memory triggers because it made me think actually. Of a game I haven't played in forever, but 1995, there was Star Trek, A Final Unity, which was a TNG DOS game. Cool. And you go to this planet and there's an instrument from an ancient race, the Chodak. And you have to like play the right tunes on this, I forget the name of it, but this like choir instrument at this temple to unlock. A, that's how you, it was like a King's Quest style okay, yeah, adventure yeah. game. But you had to like play the right stuff to get the next item. And it just, they sounded very similar to me in my head. I, if I probably went back and watched the long play, it's probably completely different because it was uh, 28 years ago or something. Damn. But um, 95. Yeah, right? yeah. But that was a good little bit of, of memory triggers. Cool. And then just in general, thinking about it now, it's kind of funny. I, I made a note of this in my notes that I didn't mention, mm-hmm. but having um, haunted lonely woods and goat was like an interesting combination since I just rewatched um, Edgar's The Witch. Oh, <laughs> the other week, yeah, yeah. Showing it to a friend and like there's, you know, they're in a haunted mm-hmm. forest functionally mm-hmm. and they have an evil goat <laughs> that lives on their, their little homestead. Yeah. I was like, oh no, we did the, we did the, the, the witch combo. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did. Huh. Indirectly. God, I haven't, yeah, I should rewatch that movie. Yeah, I totally forgot Anya Taylor-Joy was yeah. in that, that she's the primary daughter. Like they just didn't, yeah, both these both these yeah. albums have, do have like a, a natural theming to it, you know. Yeah, a meadow and a forest, mm-hmm. like, and and they're very yeah. minimalist too. Like this album in particular, I think it seems to be like one synthesized keyboard. Like maybe maybe two, like it, it's a very minimalist by Dungeons and Standards. There's not like a lot of layering of like very different types of synth sounds. Yeah. But like Goat Meadow did like had like just very crunchy with some clean kind of synthesizer on it sometimes. Um, and mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's, but yeah, this is obviously more evocative of like video games, but yeah, like a mysterious, because again, it's, it's got a very clean synthesized sound to it, but, um, uh, mm-hmm. well, I, I was gonna say, we should also mention, I should look into something similar for, for Metago, but like you were saying, this has a, a music video too, which was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the effort that they put into it. There is, I found it because I was looking to see if other people talked about this album and uh, Mm -hmm. I found this article on nocleansinging.com where they talk the the premiere of the video and uh, they get a Mm. quote from the artist, Sean uh, Heelan. My secret horror is meant to signify the horror of impending death. The hands of time no longer signal hope for a future, but rather serve as a constant reminder of the mortality that always was when this realization occurs, we resign ourselves to wait in silent and stoic horror. And of the album as a whole, which shares its name of the composition, he says, the album is a journey into the terrifying control the human mind inflicts on the individual from mortality to isolation. My secret horror seeks to give a voice to those silence, not by an outside force, but rather the confines of their own thoughts. The human mind can serve as the most effective prison as its boundaries are unseen and the prisoners often unaware they are serving time at their own doing. Mm. So yeah, there's, there's a whole like philosophy behind this album. And like, I mean, even before I read that article, I could, I could tell it was a very like internalized album. Like I said, it's not bombastic. It's not about wizards fighting dragons, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. which is a nice change of pace. I mean, not that I, yeah, I, I admire good wizard fight, you know, in an album, but like sometimes you want something different and sometimes you want like quiet contemplation in the woods as you're bleeding out from a wound, (laughs) (laughs) trying to see the lake one last time before you die. Trying to get to the wizard. So yeah, well, no, no, he's too busy fighting the dragon. Uh, he's off in the HDK albums. (laughs) (laughs) Come back. Uh, Very good. But yeah, it's it's a it's a good listen. It's it's definitely like 
a quiet contemplative, like it's an album you listen to while you're reading or, you know, for me, like this is an album I'd listen to at night. I would not, I would not listen to it during the day. Like when I'm trying to work or do something like that, this is mm. more when I'm trying to relax and, and wind down for the day. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Be sure to check out Realm and Ritual if you get a chance and both the albums we listened to today. Our next episode, we're going to be looking at some of the delights our listeners on the Discord, the Night Clerk Radio Discord, have uh, shared with us. So it's a promote yourself Discord extravaganza. So be on the lookout for that. And don't forget, Copperhead, you can order it now. And uh, don't forget, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash nightclerkradio. You can get in on this, some really great discussions and link sharing on our Discord. Uh, we have a small but very active community. Uh, also, we do a bonus episode every month, and we've got quite a few for you to go through uh, to archive binge and uh, some other rewards to check out. We are at Night Clerk Radio on Twitter. I'm at Russ Payton. Burke is at Burke McBurkinson. And we have a website, nightclerkradio.com. There's a Facebook page. And uh, be sure to tell your friends, your enemies, your frenemies to rate and review. Your goats. Your goat, yeah. <laughs> to review us on uh, your podcast and have of choice. <laughs> and we'll be talking to you later if we don't die of wounds alone in the forest at night. Um. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>